This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The New York Yankees faced the Baltimore Orioles at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore for a Wednesday night game on June 27, 1973. The Yankees were managed by Ralph Houck and came into this game with a 41-31 record, three games ahead of the Orioles in the NL East. The Orioles were managed by Earl Weaver and were looking to make it back to the playoffs after three straight trips to the World Series before finishing in third place in 1972. This audio recording is from the New York Radio Broadcast, featuring announcers Phil Rizzuto and Frank Messer. All right, Dave McNally is out on the mound, loosening up. And so the Yankees trying to continue their hot streak. Baltimore right behind the Yankees, just uh, three games out. And almost tied with Milwaukee, also three games out. By the way, the Red Sox at Cleveland were rained out tonight. Red Sox are five games behind. So there'll still be a lot of action. And in Boston, they were rained out. So maybe that storm will take its time getting down here. But right now, as Frank mentioned, a beautiful night for the ball game. And Frank Mess is just about ready to uh, carry along. Let's see if we get some quick scores in. Frank can give them to you before we start. Well, let's see what we have. Cleveland at Boston postponed wet grounds. Milwaukee 3, Detroit 2 at the end of seven innings. Slayton against Coleman, and Norm Cash has hit his 10th home run of the year. That's the first game of a doubleheader. The Phillies trail the Mets. Mets got seven runs in the first inning. The Phillies have pecked away. It's now 7-6 to six at the end of five. That's the first game of a doubleheader. San Francisco defeated Atlanta 6-5. to five. Cubs over Montreal 6-1 to one in the first game. Second game is tied 3-3 three to three at the end of 10. And those are the only scores we have up to right now. Horace Clark steps in against the left-hander Dave McNally, and we're set for baseball here in Baltimore. Clark is hitting 267. He has 76 base hits. And the first pitch to him. Low, ball one. Clark has 68 singles and 8 doubles. He has scored 29 runs, driven in 21, and he has five stolen bases. McNally's next pitch. Taken for a strike. Fastball at the knees, and it's one and one. McNally is making his third start against the Yankees and his 17th start overall this year. He beat Steve Klein 4-2 on a four-hitter April 17th. Pitch is cut on and foul back. McNally then got wrapped for seven hits and five runs in two and a third innings at Yankee Stadium in the second game of a doubleheader May 13th. The Orioles rebounded to win the game 9-6. He brings a 16-9 career record against the Yankees into this ball game. McNally kicks and deals. Clark takes high. McNally has not finished his last three starts. This pitch is fouled back. McNally last won a ball game on June 3rd. That was down in Arlington, Texas. It's a long time for this left-hander to go without a win, Phil. Yes, it is. Speaking of Arlington, Texas, it would be very interesting. That kid, David Clyde, 18 years old, pitching against Jim Cott, the winningest left-hander pitching today in the big league. So youth against age tonight. 2-2 two, two pitch to Clark is fouled back, and that'll be right in front of us, I think. And is. Two balls and two strikes. Out holes on Clark. McNally started this year with three straight wins. Then he lost six in a row. One, two, and now has lost three straight. <laughs> Clark lines this one out of the left center base hit. Coming in quickly, Don Baylor fields the ball, and Clark is on with a leadoff single. So Clark picks up his 77th base hit. And Roy White's about it. Roy hitting 236. about McNally he has been shut out four times this year twice by one to nothing scores and twice by two nothing counts White fouls one off to the right side Roy hitting 236 he has six home runs 21 runs batted in five stolen bases and three doubles there's the set by McNally Look over to first and the pitch. 
White bunts it. Third base side of the mound. McNally is up with it. Makes his throw to first in time. White is out, but he'll be credited with a sacrifice. As Clark goes to second. Make it 1-3. Williams took the throw at first base. A sacrifice moves Clark along. And now Matty Alou with a chance to drive in a run. Matty is hitting 282. 11 doubles, one triple, one home run, 15 runs batted in. Yankees are 6 and 3 against the Orioles this season. Two and one here in Baltimore, four and two at Yankee Stadium. Matty Alou looks at a strike. McNally goes for the rosin. Now plants his left foot on the rubber and looks down to Andy Etcherbaron for a sign. Short stretch. The check at second. And the pitch to the left hand hitting Alou. Strike called, it's 0-2. There is no score just underway. They wasted no time in starting this game, leading us to believe there might be some weather coming this way. Earlier this afternoon, Phil, they said 50-50 chance of showers tonight. Mm -hmm. Now the two-strike pitch to Matty Alou. Foul back. Knowing Baltimore, I would say it would behoove the Yankees to get on the scoreboard as quickly as possible. A little bit like last night in Cleveland. Right. Scared us. Well, that rain held off there just long enough to get that ball game in. Finished in a heavy shower, and then it stopped shortly thereafter. All right, the two-strike pitch again to Matty Alou. Here it comes, and it's a bit high. Ball and two strikes. Clark at second. There's one out. Bobby Mercer is on deck. On the coaching lines for the Yankees, Elston Howard at first, and Dick Hauser at third. McNally takes a long time getting the sign from Etcheberry. Now he's ready. Left hander glances back at second base, sees Clark and the pitch. Cut on and fouled off the end of the bat down the third baseline. Cal holes at one and two. The outfield has Don Baylor in left. Paul Blair in center and Merv Redman in right. Brooks Robinson at third. Mark Belanger at short. Bobby Gritch at second. Earl Williams at first with Etcheberry catching McNally. And here comes the one-two pitch again. Cut on, ground ball, foul outside of first. It got by, but foul. And the ball girl is frustrated as she goes forward. One of the fans reaches over and grabs it. Count, ball and two strikes, one out. Clark at second. Yankees trying to win number 42 on the year. McNally looks back and delivers. Strike three call. Matty Alou looks at strike three. Two down, and the batter will be Bobby Mercer. Mercer is hitting 289. He has 83 base hits. He leads the Yankees in many categories. Times at bat, runs, base hits, home runs, and runs batted in. First pitch to him, left-hander against left-hander is inside. Ball one. Mercer has ten doubles, one triple, twelve homers. He's up there with Clark at second. Now two outs, no score. McNally comes set below the belt. Left-hander looks back, and the pitch. Mercer swings. It's a weak ground ball to second. Rich digs it up. Flips it over to Williams to retire the side. And for the Yankees in the top half of the first, no runs, a base hit. There were no errors and a man left. At the end of the top half of the first inning, the score. The Yankees nothing, and the Orioles coming to bat. Avco Financial Services for consolidation loans. When you believe in people, the word gets around. When you believe in people, the word gets around. At Avco 
Federal Financial Services, we think a consolidation loan should be the end of your debt worries, not the beginning. So when we loan you the money to pay off your old bill, we not only help you get out of debt, but stay out of debt as well. AVCO believes in people. So when you come into AVCO, you come into money. Because if you deserve the credit, at AVCO you get it. Call us. We're in the phone book. AVCO Financial Services. When you believe in people. This is one of the clubs the Yankees have to beat and continue beating. I still think, Frank, that Baltimore and the Red Sox are going to be the two toughest clubs for the Yankees to uh, beat if they want to win the American League East. I really think so. Uh, I think, in all fairness uh, to the Detroit Tigers, there may be a little too much age there, Phil. Yeah. They are not taking the extra base. There's so many little things that a club, I think, has to do to win a championship that the Tigers don't seem to be able to do. Right, especially over this long season. This club has the youth and the experience, of course, to go with the youth. But a lot of good young ball players. Uh, outside of tonight, that Bumber and Coggins have just about taken the jobs away from Rettman and Baylor. Well, Bumber and Coggins are both left-hand hitters against the Southpaw Peterson. They do have uh, Baylor and Rettman in there. But you're right about that. The big three in this Baltimore club has sudden, suddenly become Blair, Bumbrey, and Coggins. Yeah. You say Bumbrey who and Coggins who, <laughs> but uh, they're names that will be remembered. Merv Rettman will lead off right now. He's a right-hand hitter. Merv Redmond is batting 211. You know, Phil, I'll tell you something that's uh, sounded real strange to me, and uh, I have not sat down to figure it out. What is that? Right now, let's watch the first pitcher to Redmond. Here it comes, and it's bounced on one big hop to Nettles at third. Greg has it. Throws on the first, one pitch, one away. Obviously, Nettles was not seriously hurt last night when hit by Felipe Alou's batted ball. He's right back in there tonight. Nice. And now Bobby Gritch, a 243 hitter. I was talking with Joe Lutz last night in Cleveland, and he said, Frank, believe it or not, the Yankees' average age is older than the Detroit Tigers. Well, you got uh, McDaniel and uh, Felipe Alou and uh, Matty Alou in there. Here's the first pitch to Gritch. Hit high in the air to right field. Digging back for it is Matty Alou. Back on the track, back to the wall. Reaches up, and he's got it. Right in front of the padded wall in the right field corner. So two pitches and two down. But I said, I told Lutz, I said, Joe, look at it this way. Not in key position. Right. And he said, oh, that's true. It all came up. We started the same discussion you and I just had. Who are going to be the contenders? I said I thought Boston and Baltimore. He said he didn't think Boston would. Mm. And uh, he said he still thought Detroit would, despite the age. And that's what uh, brought the thing up. So well, That's what makes it interesting. Everybody with their own opinion. All right, here's Paul Blair. Blair leads the Orioles with a 317 average, and he takes a ball down low. First two hitters swung on the first pitch. Blair uh, under hypnosis, hypnotic treatment to cure his fear of the pitched ball. Swings to this one. There's a drive to deep left field. Forget it. It's gone. Blair homers over the 360-foot sign. Home run number 11 for Paul Blair. He has been unbelievable, the hottest hitter in the American League for the past month. He has now had 39 hits in his last 89 trips. That's uh, well over 430, nearly 440. Came into this game the number five hitter in the league. And that ball was well hit, Phil. Absolutely. Here's that, Tommy Davis, the designated hitter. That was one of the pitches giving him trouble, that uh, tight pitch. Davis takes a strike. Tommy Davis is hitting 265. His baseball career prolonged due to the designated hitter rule in the American League. Without it, he probably would not be playing in the major leagues. He takes low and inside, one and one. Paul Blair, ever since being hit and seriously hurt by a pitch from Ken Tatum, had been bailing out on the high inside pitches. 
One one deal. Bouncing ball off the end of the bat to the right side. Clark charges. He's up. Throws to first. Just got him by a step. And the side is retired. But the Orioles score a run on Blair's homer. No errors, nobody left. At the end of one, it's Baltimore one of the Yankees nothing. <laughs> Whenever there have been songs, they've sung of home. Years beyond or within memory. Home. Well, won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? And now, home. In many ways, our name tells the story of the Home Savings Bank. Whenever you think of remodeling, additions, new equipment for your home... Think naturally of a home improvement loan from home. The Home Savings Bank. Growing. With offices in Albany, Colony, Greenwich, Hoosick Falls, and Gilderland. Growing. Not to be big, just to be better. An equal housing lender. Where most offices are open Saturdays. Lovely young ladies that uh, bring the coffee here in the broadcast booth now, Phil. Uh, the gentleman that used to bring them is sick tonight. And that's why the surprise. Oh, really? Yep. Just a sudden illness. I saw him earlier, I thought. Well, I don't know. I was reading that commercial. I didn't get too good a look, Frank, so you're going to have to. Jim Ray Hart oh. is in there, takes a strike, and looks at a ball now. What it was, the Jim Ray. Jim Ray Hart, batting 260, seven home runs, 31 runs batted in. <laughs> McNally, into the wind, here's his 1 1 pitch. Swung on and foul straight down at Etcheverin's feet. Better. McNally is making his 17th start. He has eight complete games, one shutout. In 117 innings, he has allowed 95 base hits, walked 37, and struck out 26. Ball and two strikes. Jim Ray swings the bat back and forth. Here's the pitch to him, and he takes it up high. Fastball from McNally. Baylor plays him deep and left. Blair uh, to the left side and center. Rudiman toward right center field. The infield backed off and up the middle. McNally's pitch high and away. Full count now, three and two on Jim Ray Hart. McNally working with the left foot on the rubber. Rocks back on the right one. The kick, and here's the pitch. Swung on, bounced to third. Brooks Robinson drops it, picks it up, throws to first, and he is out on a nice stretch by Earl Williams. Williams stretched way out, kept his foot on the bag, saved Brooks Robinson an error. A faster man would have beaten it, but Hart has left his speed in San Francisco. Very good, Frank. Very good. And speaking of uh, good, that split that uh, Earl Wiggins did down there surprised me. Made a classic play down at first base. One out, and here comes Greg Nettles. Greg has been red hot lately. Had a home run last night. Swings at this one and fouls it back. Nettles last night had uh, a single, a home run, and a walk. He scored three runs. Was hit by a batted ball while running at third. Felipe Alou is the hitter. Really shook Felipe up more than I think it did Nettles. Mm. He was upset, afraid that Greg was hurt. He had to leave the game, but he's right back in tonight. One strike pitch to him. Here it comes, and he takes it high and tight. Greg Nettles is hitting 249. Leads the club in home runs with 13. He has 41 runs butted in. McNally again ready to work to him. Here's the pitch. Foul back. Got him in on the fist with a slider. And Nettles is behind the count one and two. Etcherbaron goes out to the mound. He got a pitch that time that he didn't call for. They have a nice crowd here in Baltimore tonight, Phil. They told me they had a 10,000 advance sale. And there are a lot of uh, walk-in fans here tonight. I'd say it's pretty close to 20. 
Although I don't know what's capacity here. You know it better than I, Frank. Well, it's they're spread out, and there's a lot of stands we can't see overhead. Here's the next pitch. Nettles takes it high, and the count is two and two. I'd say 20 right now would be a pretty good guess. I guess, you know, it's pretty good when you match your advance with uh, walk-in fans. McNally dealing two and two, and it's popped up foul coming back into the seats. Baltimore is not a good advanced sales city because of the weather. A lot of people here wait to see what the weather is like. Then they decide whether they'll go to the ball game. Count holds two and two on Greg Nettles. Left-hander against left-hander. One out. The base is empty. McNally rocks and deals. Nettles lines it, and it's caught by Gritch, the second baseman. Line drive right at Gritch. Two down. And out Thurman Munson. Munson's been having fun lately. He's batting 296. Ten home runs, 38 runs batted in. I thought that voice sounded familiar. That's the old Brooklyn Dodger pitcher Rex Bonney doing the uh, PA announcing for the Baltimore Orioles. Right. Sure is. Name from the past. Ebbets Field is gone, but Rex Bonney's still around. A few years ago when they had a uh, strike down here, the after members had to go on strike. Uh, Chuck Thompson and Bill O'Donnell were not allowed to work. Rex Barney came in and broadcast the ball game. Uh-huh. Thurman Munson, right-hand hitter. Takes down low, ball one. McNally winds again and delivers. Low and outside, ball two. I believe Rex did the uh, game of the day on uh, Mutual at one time. Or was on at times. He had a great saying. I think he said if the plate was high and outside, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Two-nothing pitch. Munson takes a strike on the outside corner. Two balls and one strike. Two outs. Well, he threw as hard as anybody, Frank. I faced Rex spring training and World Series play. And he didn't have to take a back seat to anybody, but his control was horrible. Right. Two-one out of Munson. He swings and bounces it slowly down the third baseline foul as Robinson gets to it. Munson ran it out, but he'll have to come back and do it again. One of those dark clouds, Phil, we were worried about passing overhead, but that one's going to pass us by, I believe. Which way is the ocean from here? That would be that way. Does that help you? <laughs> it helps you, but not anybody listening in New York. Well, I noticed the wind is coming from our back. Right. If, uh, if the clouds come uh, sort of over the third base stands there, then you have to worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's where most of the bad weather comes from. That from away. Our, from our left. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Two months, and Orioles are leading one to nothing in the ball game. We're in the top of the second. McNally takes the sign. And the pitch to Thurman. Did he check the swing? The Orioles say no, and now... Shylock says yes from first base. Munson out on strike. And the side is retired. Second strikeout for McNally. And now at the end of the top half of the second inning, the score is Baltimore 1 and New York nothing. Williams will lead it off. 
He's playing first base tonight, then Don Baylor, and then Brooks Robinson here in the bottom half of the second inning. William's right-hand batter is hitting 220. He has eight home runs, 29 runs batted in. He and Earl Weaver did not see eye to eye for one day this year. And he takes a strike, but they have patched up their differences. They had another little argument uh, last night, but it was just for, oh, maybe 20 seconds. It seems like Earl is kind of rough on uh, the other Earl, Earl Williams. Next pitch to him, taken inside for a ball, one and one. Seems to have helped uh, Earl weave his image, uh, getting on big Earl Williams and making him back down. Weaver needs a lot of help. 1-1 one, one pitch. Had the plate, but a bit high. Two balls and one strike to Williams. Billy Hunter coaches down at third base for Baltimore. The first base coach is George Stoller. And the pitch is cut on and missed. He had a big rip. Well, Phil, Detroit has just scored four runs in the bottom half of the eighth inning to take a six to three lead over Milwaukee. Grand slam home run by Dick McAuliffe. Wow. His fifth home run of the year. Next pitch here to Williams. Hit in the air to left field. Roy White drifting back. Should get to it. Under it now. Near the track. Makes the catch. Williams is out. One away. Now we'll have a look at Don Baylor. Baylor, the left fielder. Batting 229. He has three home runs. 15 runs batted in. And he's a right-hand batter. And the first pitch to him gets the outside corner for a call, strike one. Holds that bat up, circles it around over his head, swings in this one. It's a drive to straightaway center. Mercer back under this one. He's there, and he makes the catch. There are two down on two fly balls. It's fairly deep to the outfield. In this ballpark, down the line, it's 309. To the alleys, 380. And a straightaway center, 410. Brooks Robinson now with two outs and nobody on. Robinson batting 214. Four home runs, 20 runs batted in. And he is a right-hand batter. Peterson delivers, low and outside to Brooks Robinson, ball one. Peterson working very quickly tonight, Baltimore leading one to nothing. On a first inning home run by Paul Blair. Next pitch, fouled back. One ball, one strike, two outs. Breeze still blowing in from left to right. Peterson rocks back on the right foot and delivers up high. Two and one. Robinson waves the bat back and forth, waiting for Peterson. Now the pitch outside again, ball three. Well, Peterson goes behind the count. Three balls, one strike. He has not walked anybody or struck out anybody. He has allowed one run on one hit. The home run by Paul Blair, which was his 11th. Now the 3-1 to Brooks Robinson. Hit on the ground, left side, and through for a base hit. Nettles made a bid for it, could not reach it, and Brooks Robinson has a single. The Orioles' second hit in this ball game. It brings up the catcher, Andy Etchebarren, batting 241. This is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. We pause for station identification. Hi, Dave Smith here with an invitation to all sports fans to give me a call some night on Sports Talk. I'm here weekday nights from 7 till 9, working around the Yankees this season. Sundays, too. This is WQBK-FM Rensler. Hatcher Barron steps in, takes a look down at Billy Hunter, the third base coach. Felipe Alou will hold Brooks Robinson on at first base. And the pitch now to Echebarron. Cut on and bounced foul off the left side, rolling toward the Baltimore dugout. Mark Belanger, the shortstop, is out on deck. The Yankees shade Echebarron a bit to the left side on the infield. The outfield is pretty much straight away with Matty Alou fairly shallow and right. 
Echebarren has been to battle only 29 times this year with seven base hits. Four runs batted in, no home runs. Next pitch to him, swung on, hit in the air to center field. Mercer is there again, waiting under it, and that retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, a man left, and out the end of two innings, the score is Baltimore one and the Yankees nothing. We at Getty have been telling you that you can save money on our premium gasoline because it's priced a few cents less per gallon than most other major premiums. Well, now we'd like to tell you just how much money you can save with Getty Premium. Fill it up, please. With your first gallon of Getty Premium, you save about three cents. With five gallons, about 15 cents. A 20-gallon fill-up saves about 60 cents. Use Getty for a month and you can save about 250. Use it for six months and save around 15 dollars. And if you use Getty for a year, or around 12,000 miles of driving, you can save around 30 dollars. $30 for doing nothing more than filling up with Getty. That's enough to buy another 75 gallons, which is enough gas to take you about a 1,000 miles. At Getty, we give you more gas for your money, so you get more miles for your money. On the scoreboard, Cleveland at Boston rained out. Detroit 6 and Milwaukee 3 at the end of 8 innings. May, Cash, and McAuliffe with a grand slammer of Homer. That's the first of two. The Mets lead the Phillies 7-6 at the end of 7.5. First of two. Giants beat Atlanta 6-5. Gar, Lum, and Rada had two home runs. Cubs beat Montreal 6-1 in the first game. Second game, bottom of the 12th, all tied 3-3. All right, Frank Messer, we're ready to go. Felipe Lufil leads it off. And the first pitch to him is in there for a strike. Felipe is hitting 243, three home runs, 16 runs batted in. McNally deals again. Felipe hits a changeup on two hops to short. Belanger has it long throw. Just did get him. Felipe Alou running hard. Oldest man on the club, Phil, really hustling yeah, in every play. Down the line. He goes hard. So there's one out as Belanger just barely got Felipe by a half a step. And now Gene Michael. Michael, a shortstop, right hand hitter, batting 243, as was Felipe Alou. Seven doubles, one triple, three home runs, 30 runs batted in. Up there is a right hand batter, and he takes low ball one. Baltimore leads one to nothing on a first inning home run by Paul Blair. One out, nobody on for the Yankees, and the next pitch. Swung on, hit out toward left center field. Paul Blair, though, circling to his left, or to his right, rather, is under it, and he makes the catch. Michael out on a fly ball to Blair. Two away, and here is Horace Clark, who has the only base hit for the Yankees. Clark let off the first inning with a single to left field. McNally is working quickly. First pitch to Clark. He bunts at it and misses strike one. Yankees leading the Eastern Division of the American League by three games over Baltimore and Milwaukee. Next pitch to Clark. Changeup is high. One and one. Baltimore has a percentage point advantage over Milwaukee. They have more than that, the way the Detroit Tigers yeah. scored those runs. Next pitch, foul back overhead. Ball and two strikes. Milwaukee batting in the ninth and trailing Detroit 6-3. to three. Another one fouled back. That's a final now. Detroit has defeated Milwaukee 6-3. to three. It is all over. The Yankees playing good ball. They've won nine of their last ten ball games. Pitch to Clark. Solid base hit through the left side. Line drive past Brooks Robinson. So Clark is two for two. And those are the only two base hits off McNally. 
If you like to compare, the Yankees have scored 316 runs through their first 72 games this year. Last year, through their first 72 games, they had scored 244. Right, a percentage higher this year. Throw to first base, Clark is back. Roy White will step in for the Yankees. After Clark let off the first with a single, White sacrificed him along with a bunt between the mound and third base. McNally delivers. White takes a fastball inside. Looking out there at that young second baseman, Bobby Gritch, Phil, he has handled 400 chances this year, and he's made only one error. One error. That's unbelievable. Clark at first. McNally holds the set, throws over there, and Clark gets back. It's tough to get a jump on McNally, but Clark may try. We'll see. McNally looks, and the pitch. High. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Roy White. Tomorrow night, we're going to see Sam McDowell pitch for the Yankees and Jesse Jefferson for Baltimore. Throw to first, Clark gets back. I've never seen Jefferson. Young man, they tell me, has the basic pitches, though, the fastball, the curve, the slider, and the changeup. He'd be pretty good. He won his game up in Boston 2-1. to 2-0 to pitch to White. High, ball three. I think he had a shutout going with two outs in the ninth inning, and Rico Petroselli hit a home run to tie it up. Uh-huh. And he, uh, they tell me, was even more impressive after that. He didn't let it rattle him. That was his first Major League ball game. Wore right down. Orioles scored in the tenth, and he uh, flanked the Red Sox in the bottom of the tenth. Pitch to White is taken for a strike, three and one. Here Baltimore leads one to nothing on Blair's first inning homer. The Yankees have Clark at first and two outs here in the third inning. Dave McNally kicks and deals again. White hits a bouncer off Brooks Robinson's arm at third. Everybody's going to be safe. Brooks Robinson to the glove side. Ball came up, kicked off his arm. And we'll wait for the official scorer's decision. Clark down to second. Roy White on at first base. Matty Alou the batter with two outs. Base hit. Base hit for Roy White. Third base hit for the Yankees. You can hear the crowd. I'm kind of surprised they gave him a hit. First pitch to Matty Alou. Hit in the air to center field. Blair drifting back. Still backpedaling. Under it. Makes the catch to retire the side. No runs on two hits. There were no errors and two men are left on. At the end of the top half of the third inning, the score is Baltimore 1 and New York nothing. Live modern this summer. Live cool this summer with Fetters, the room air conditioner of excellence. The linkage of two words, Fetters and excellence, began more than 75 years ago. The company's founder established his business on the principle that if you build a product exceptionally well, your customers will be exceptionally loyal. And when you buy a Fetters product, you know that it has been engineered with an extra measure of care, manufactured with an extra measure of concern, fabricated of materials that offer an extra assurance of dependability. Though the cost of living is going up, Fetters actually keeps the cost of room air conditioners down with its super saver and silver anniversary specials. There's a Fetters room air conditioner model available to meet your particular cooling requirements. See them, then live modern, live cool with Fetters at Harold Drew's Appliance, Albany, Cohoes Tobacco Company, Cohoes, and Columbia Electric, Valencia. Is the only field in the big leagues without light. Is that right, Frank? Right. So the game was called because of darkness, suspended rather. They will resume that game tomorrow. It was tied 3-3 at the end of 12 innings. 
Uh, that's strange they never put lights in that park, Frank. Certainly is. They draw well in that yeah. ballpark, though, with just day baseball. Here's Mark Belanger, the Orioles shortstop. And the first pitch to him is lined to center base hit. That's the third hit for Baltimore as Belanger lines one out to center. And now Merv Rettenmund. Hey, speaking of attendance, Phil, American League attendance is up by a quarter of a million over the record year of 1969 and a half a million over last year. I think the Brewers have uh, had quite a bit to do with that. They're about, oh, well over 150,000 ahead of last year. All right, Fritz Peterson will check first, and his first pitch down to Redmond is fouled back to our right. Redmond grounded out to third on the first pitch in the first inning. Kansas City is really the biggest gainer. They're uh, nearly a quarter of a million ahead mm. of last year. Milwaukee, 182,000 ahead. Yankees, 116,000 ahead of last year. California up 137. Look to first pitch. He bunched this one. And Munson grabs it in fair territory in front of the plate. Throws on to first base. He's out. Munson looked to second, so he had no play on Rudiman. That'll be a sacrifice, 2-3. He's out, Munson to a loo. The batter will be Bobby Gritch. Joe Coleman got his 11th win for Detroit, 6-3 over Milwaukee and Frank Lindsay. Other teams showing an increase. The Cleveland Indians are up, 76,000. Chicago, 46. Boston, 33. Minnesota, up 6,000. The only teams that are down, Detroit, Oakland, the Texas Rangers, and Baltimore. Baltimore's down 15,000 over last year at this time. Pitch to Gritch, down low, ball one. After tonight, Texas might uh, be even again, because this will be the first sellout crowd in the history of that ballpark down there. With that kid, David uh, Clyde, pitching. I hope the kid pitches a good ball game. Yeah, so do I. There's a change. Or the palm ball, and it came in high. Ball two. When that game be starting? Another 15 minutes or so? Yep. Peterson deals, and it's fouled back by Gritch. Two balls and a strike. Baltimore is four games over 500 with a record of 34 wins and 30 losses. The Yankees are 10 games over, 41 and 31. Milwaukee, four games above, 37 and 33. Boston is even, 34. Detroit, four down, and Cleveland, 19 under 500. Runner at second, one out the pitch. Swung out in line, foul down the right side. Two balls and two strikes on Bobby Gritch. First game of the doubleheader at Shea Stadium. The New York Mets 7 and the Philadelphia Phillies 6. Stone the winner and Lurch the loser. Now the ladies take over. Oh, yeah. The uh... the Mets and the Phillies, I believe, are going to yeah. play between games of the doubleheader. 2-2 pitch. Cut on, bounce to third. Nettles will hold Belanger at second. Throws to first. Gritch is out. Two down. And now Paul Blair will get a big hand as he steps in. In his last 11 games, Blair has gone 22 for 40. Counting tonight. In his last five games, he's had 11 for 19. Teddy, he's so hot, I wouldn't uh, mind walking him. He's I, red hot. I wouldn't pitch to him. Pitch very carefully. First one, he swings and he misses. He was going for the downs again. Blair said he really believed that he was over his fear and his bailing out when Marty Patton pitched him up under the chin with a fastball in Boston. And he came right back and got a base hit on the next pitch. The 0-1 delivery. Swung on and lined on to right center field. That's going to be a base hit. A run will score. Belanger scores easily from second. Blair going for two. He slides. He's safe. 
Michael came down on top of him, but Blair had his right foot in on the bag. So Blair has driven in both runs now with a home run and a double. And you talk about being hot. He is red hot, sizzling. Now Baltimore leading by a score of two to nothing, and the batter is Tommy Davis, the designated hitter. Fastball is down low to him, ball one. The fourth hit and second run off Peterson. Fritz checks second. Left-hander delivers down low again. Two balls and no strikes to Earl Williams. Or rather to Tommy Davis. Looking over the on-deck circle. Earl Williams is on deck. Now the 2-0 delivery. Low and inside. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Tommy Davis. Davis grounded out to Clark at second, his first time up. Peterson ready, whips it in, and he swings, lines a face hit past Michael. That'll get Blair home from second. Roy White up with the ball, throws into second. Baltimore leads 3 nothing. So they turn Tommy Davis loose on 3-0, and and he delivered with a base hit, a run batted in, and uh, Freddie Bean starts throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Here's Earl Williams, the first baseman. The RBI for Davis is 26. And now Williams, right-hand batter, flied to fairly deep left field, leading off the second. Alou holds Davis on at first. The pitch to Williams, breaking ball down low, ball one. Baltimore leading 3-0 here in the bottom half of the third inning. Peterson looking long and hard for Munson's sign. Checks at first base and the pitch. Cut out and fouled back by Williams. And now Felipe Alou is playing halfway at first behind the base runner, not holding him on. Fred Bean in the Yankee bullpen, loosening up. Peterson has been racked for two runs on three hits here in the third. He brings the hands together. And the next pitch. Swing and a miss. On the screwball, a ball and two strikes. Two outs. Tommy Davis, the base runner at first. And a one-two pitch will be coming to Williams. Here it is. Foul back and just off to our right. Peterson with a new, a new baseball takes time to rub it up. And we're ready with the one-two pitch. Here it comes. Up under his chin. Rocks him back. Two and two. Well, it's official now. It will be Dave Clyde against Jim Cott down in Arlington. We just get the warm-up pitchers on the wire. Change-up is lined to left field. It's a fair ball. Base hit. Down into the corner. Tommy Davis around second going for third. They'll hold him up there as the throw comes in. A double for Williams, who goes into second standing up. Bill Rizzuto, you can remember the time they would not have held Tommy Davis up at third base on that two-base hit. No way. I tell you, he was some. He was the complete ball player before he broke that ankle. And right now... He's a lot better than uh, ball plays who are 100%. That's the sixth hit for Baltimore. Runners at second and third. And Don Baylor. They're going to put Baylor on. First base is open. They'll put Baylor on and pitch to Brooks Robinson. 
And Phil Rizzuto again, I'll say to you, you can remember the time they wouldn't have done this. No, that's true. Of course, age is one thing you can't uh, hold back. Two balls and no strikes <clears throat> to Baylor. Was it two friends met? Hadn't seen each other in a long time. One said, my, you look older. And the other one said, I hope so. <laughs> Ball four. That puts Baylor on, and Ralph Halk is on his way to the mound. Halk is going to the bullpen. That is all for Peterson. Halk waves to the pen before he crosses the foul line. So Peterson goes out after pitching two and two-thirds innings. He is charged with three runs and six hits. One walk, no strikeouts. And Peterson will leave in favor of Fred Bean. You know, here in the third inning, Belanger let off with a single and Rudderman sacrificed him. Rich hit a ground ball to Nettles. Nettles held Belanger at second base and threw Rich out. But then, with first base open, they pitched to Paul Blair, and he doubled to right center his second extra base hit in the ball game. That brought uh, Belanger home. Tommy Davis lined one just past Gene Michaels' glove, going to his left at short for a base hit, getting Blair home. Williams doubled to left field. Davis going to third. Now Baylor has been put on, and Fred Bean will come in to pitch to Brooks Robinson with the bases loaded. And, uh, Phil, what you got? Well, we want to talk to the fans about the All-Star game and the votes. As you know, uh, the Yankees ran out of ballots before they left on that last road trip. But they have 300,000 more of them now that are available. So uh, when you come to the stadium, we hope you do get these ballots and votes. But the Yankees have six All-Star candidates on the ballot. Bobby Mercer, Roy White, Matty Alou, Greg Nettles, Horace Clark, and catcher Thurman Munson. And over here, you can write in for Ronnie Bloomberg, baseball's leading hitter. Gene Michael, a shortstop. Jim Ray Hart, the designated hitter. So, in any event, no matter how you vote, make your opinion count. Because the fans do select the starting teams, excluding the pitchers in both the American and National League. All right, Frank. You know, another thing, too, about uh, voting for your favorite ball player. In most cases, the managers, when selecting the extra men for the ball game, in most cases, they will pick the man who finished second in the voting. Right. Once in a while, they don't, and the ball player gets a little mad, as he has a right to be, but it's up to the manager. And very often, those extra men play a lot more than the starters. Yeah, right. All right, Brooks Robinson steps in against Fred Bean. With the bases loaded and two outs. Being the right-hander with that fine curveball and changeup is making his 11th appearance. He's won three, lost none, an earned run average of 1.63. He winds and deals high with a breaking ball to Brooks Robinson, ball one. Brooks Robinson single to left field his first time up. He's one for one with a 218 average. Three on, two gone, the pitch. Curveball. Quick throw to first. He's out. Munson takes Baylor off first base to retire the side. And Brooks Robinson slammed the bat and the helmet down. A little show of emotion on his part as Munson picked Baylor off and Phil Rusito, it wasn't even close. He was oh, really picked off. That was beautiful. A great uh, curveball by Bean. And uh, with a right-hand batter up, Munson had a clean shot at first, and Felipe was playing deep, had to come hustling in. All right, two runs for Baltimore on four hits, no errors, and two men are left on. And at the end of three innings, the score is Baltimore three and New York nothing. We'll take a look now at uh, the scores for you. No uh, score in that Minnesota-Texas game. And there again, the interest in that, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure the fans listening, is in how the 18-year-old youngster Dave Clyde does in his first game out of high school. Cleveland and Boston were postponed wet grounds. Detroit beat Milwaukee 6-3 to in their first game. Norm Cash 
Homer Dick McAuliffe won it with a grand slam homer in the eighth. It was his fifth home run of the year. Coleman, the winner, and Lindsay, the loser. No report on the second game. Mets took the Phillies 7-6 to six in the first game. Second game not yet underway. San Francisco over Atlanta 6-5. to five. Cubs 6, Montreal 1 in the first game. The second game suspended after 12 innings with a score 3-3. Three three. It'll be resumed tomorrow. And St. Louis at Pittsburgh, no score. Cincinnati at Houston, no score. Bobby Mercer is set to lead off the fourth inning for the New York Yankees. And set to step in with the play-by-play, ladies and gentlemen, here is Phil Rizzuto. All right, Frank, and that great pickoff play by Munson and Alou has got to prep the Yankees up. And Mercer takes a pitch low for McNally, ball one. Bobby bounced the second his first time up. Yankees trail 3-0, but this is when they're at their best, battling from behind. McNally's next pitch, low ball two. Two and nothing on deck, Jim Ray Hart. Well, as Frank mentioned, you very seldom see Brooks Robinson upset, but he was that time. A bounce of foul to the right of the plate, two and one. I think, you know, Brooks is such an intense ball player. I think it was uh, not for himself, not the no, personal no, uh, no. satisfaction of maybe driving in some runs, but for his team. Yep, but they have been struggling, and these are very important games. As they are for the Yankees, swinging a foul at Nick Detcher and it's two and two. McNally got that fastball by Mercer. It hit Andy up around the thigh. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out and nobody on in the top of the fourth. Seems that whenever Freddie Bean comes into the game, it's exciting. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Low, and it's a full count. McNally has allowed two hits and struck out two. Has not walked anybody. He's got a full count on Mercer now. Dave ready for the payoff pitch. And it's looped in back at second, going back as Gritch, digging hard, and makes a beautiful running one-hand catch with his back to the infield. Frank mentioned before, he has fielded over 400 chances with only one error. Now, not that he would have gotten an error on that play, but he gets a lot of balls that other second basemen would not get. Beautiful play by Bobby Gritch. Take a base hit away from Mercer. Here's Jim Ray Hart, who bounced the third his first time up. First pitch to Jim Ray is hit high in the air. Got it off the end of the bat. Moving back a little bit is Bala. He turns now, is under it, and makes the catch. There are two away, and the batter will be Greg Nettles, who lined hard to Gritch at second base his first time up. Nettles batting 248. Yankees trailing 3 nothing here. We're in the top of the fourth inning. First pitch to Greg is bounced slowly to the pitcher. McNally up with it. Wheels throws to first base. And the Yankees go down in order and in a hurry here in the top of the fourth inning. Nothing across in the middle of the fourth. It's Baltimore three, the Yankees nothing. Every day is Dad's Day at McDonald's because McDonald's has something Dad can really sink his teeth into. It starts with a quarter pound, 100% beef patty. We cook it up just right, then serve it with ketchup, mustard, pickles, and onions on a sesame seed bun. McDonald's new quarter pounder or quarter pounder with cheese. It's just right for a dad. You deserve a great McDonald's great new sandwich, the Quarter Pounder, available right now at all McDonald's in the Capital District and throughout the great Northeast. The house is quiet now, but it was not always so. We need more bandages, over. The wounded men, nurses, and volunteers have left, but the work goes on. In disasters, in hospitals, in blood donor centers, the house and its owners still live. The Clara Barton House in Glen Echo, Maryland. There you can feel why the American Red Cross is the good neighbor. This 
This is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. Let's pause for station identification. Hi, I'm John Watson, extending an invitation for all of you sports fans to join me weekdays and Saturday nights in John's World. We not only have music, but also weekdays we have the UPI financial reports at 15 before the hour on WQBK FM Rensselaer. Hi, Brooks Robinson, who was at bat when Baylor got picked off first base. Is up there to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Brooks singles in the hole out to left field his first time up. Oh, little pretty bean into the windup, and the curve is hit high in the air to left field. Roy White going back on the warning track by the fence and makes the catch with his hip against the fence. The wind is blowing out, so every ball hit in the air has a pretty good chance of going out of here if it's hit with anything on it. One away. You know, Bill White, speaking of uh, the little people, as you were about AFCO, you got a couple of the little whites here tonight, huh? Yeah, we brought them Where down. Where are they sitting? Right down. They're sitting with our traveling secretary, Rob Franklin, and his wife, just uh, two rows behind the screen there. Did you bring the one down that asked me for the autograph? Yep. Oh, yeah, he's a dandy. There's a curve outside. That's your barren ball one. Andy fly to center his first time up. Strike on the outside corner, one on one. The birds out in front, three to nothing. Beans fastball, line to right field. Matty Alou moving back. Is there and makes the catch. So two balls hit well, but two out. And it'll bring up Mark Belange, who's single to center and scored in the third inning. Valencia batting 218. Right hand batter. Nettles is in at third. Fastball is high. Ball one. Fritz Peterson just didn't have it tonight. Worked two and two third innings. Gave up six hits. Walked one. Didn't strike out anybody. And allowed three runs. There's a strike one and one. Matty Alou, very shallow in right field. Fastball is low. Two balls and a strike. The 2-1 pitch, the curve is over. 2-2. Two and two. And Belanger was fooled on that one. I'm going to keep me abreast of that uh, Texas-Minnesota game, Bill White, right? I am. You know, I'm watching that uh, young fellow, David Clyde. All right, Change up a little high, three and two. You know, it's a strange thing. He's pitching against the veteran Jim Cott, another left-hander, and he's won more games than any active left-hander in the American League playing now. A foul that'll drift out of play back into the crowd. Must have sold out down there for this young left-hander. Isn't that something? That might scare him. He's just probably used to pitching before four and five thousand people, maybe a uh, hundred scouts. Yeah, that's right. Of course, Texas baseball draws better than it does back east, but still, to have 30-some-odd thousand in there watching you and rooting for you, it's kind of a burden on the kid. So will those Minnesota bats be a little burden on him. The payoff pitch, a curve, check swing, bounce it back to the box. Bean has it. Flips to Felipe, and Freddie has himself an easy inning, three up and three down. And now at the end of four full innings, it's Baltimore three, the Yankees nothing. Hey, pal, that's a pretty good-looking car you got there. What kind is it? It's a Subaru four-door sedan. Subaru? Isn't that the car that won some rally races recently? What made you pick a Subaru? Well, sir, for one thing, it's got front-wheel drive, like the Oldsmobile Toronado and the Cadillac Eldorado. Yeah? That and radial tires give it great traction for tight turns. Uh Uh-huh. Also, in the Subaru, you get rack and pinion steering, four-wheel independent suspension, and a push-button radio. Yeah? For the one low price, you get vinyl bucket seats that recline and tinted glass all around. Wow. And Subaru's 1,400cc quadrizontal engine is as quiet as a purring kitten. Yeah. Gives me up to 30 miles per gallon on regular. And it goes like a jackrabbit. I never met anyone who knew so much about a car. What are you, an engineer? No, I'm a dealer. I sell that Subaru. 
Your new Subaru dealer in Capital Land is Fred Carl's New Salem Garage. The area's oldest and largest Saab dealer now stocks a complete line of Subaru. Fred Carl's New Salem Garage, Route 85, New Salem. No sudden Sam McDowell will make his third start of the season for the Yankees tomorrow night here in Baltimore, and he'll be going against uh, young right-hander Jesse Jefferson. McDowell so far this year has won two and lost none. Then the Yankees will return to the stadium Friday night, and they'll face an old nemesis. Mr. Moist, the Gaylord Ferry will be out showing his wares to uh, Ralph Houck and the New York Yankees Friday night as the Cleveland Indians come in. Also to that camera that's going to be on them. They've tried that before in the National League. That didn't work. Didn't work. No, yeah. I doubt it. All right, Thurman Munson, who struck out his first time up, leads off against McNally. And Thurman swings and misses strike one. Munson batting 295. Baltimore out in front 3 nothing. They scored one in the first. On a homer by Paul Blair and two in the third. Felipe Alou on deck as the Yankees try to get back in this ball game. McNally rocks back, no wind up. A bounce slowly to third, backing up Brooks Robinson up with a throw to first, and Munson's out of there. All the way now, Felipe Alou, who bounced out to deep short, just missed beating it out first time up. Felipe batting 242. In Baltimore here, they bunch the hitters and give them the right field and left field lines. 309 down each line. That's a bouncer over the pitcher's head. Belanger gets a nice big hop. Fires to first. The Lou is out. Two quick outs here. On three pitches by McNally, and now Gene Michael, who fly to left center field his first time up. Blair making the catch. The stick batting 242. All right, here's the first pitch to Gene Michael. Outside ball one. Good crowd here tonight to watch Baltimore and the Yankees. Yankees leading the American League East by three games over uh, Baltimore. Fly ball to left field. Baylor goes back on the warning track and makes the catch. Oh, the Yankees go down in order again. Three up and three down. And in the middle of the fifth inning, it's Baltimore three and the Yankees nothing. What has one power source and seven quick change attachments to keep your lawn driveway, and sidewalks neat and clean all year round. It's the Aaron's Environmental Track Team, a single seven-horsepower drive to which you can add a reel or rotary mower, a snow throw, a lawn vacuum, a brush sweeper, a shredder bagger, and shredder grinder. If you take pride in your home's surrounding, take a look at the Aaron's Environmental Track Team. There's a lot to get attached to. And right now, you can save $50 on Aaron's Environmental Track Team attachments when purchased with the snow throw. There are 50 Aaron's servicing dealers in the WQBK listening area. See the one near you and save $50 on Aaron's Environmental Track Team attachments now. Distributed by ACA Outdoor Power Equipment, Incorporated. Murphy at the stadium, Saturday, July 14th. We're talking about that young David Clyde, Scooter. Uh-oh. The late teen-year-old fella. No. Oh, oh. I'm just going to watch the score. Keep you uh, aware of what's going on down there. I, You know, I, I of course, money to pay is tough for an 18-year-old to uh, win in the big leagues. Oh, well, then, listen, I agree with you. And you certainly don't think. agree with me. In the sense I do, but with this kid, you know, with his record and everything, I just, it's like a hunch, you know. I'm yeah. a hunch player anyway. But one thing I was glad of, Whitey Herzog made the statement today that he expects the kid to be very nervous, and even if he does have a bad outing in this game, he is definitely going to give him at least two more starts, and then if he continues to do badly, send him right down to the minus so that he doesn't, as you say, uh, ruin his confidence too quickly. Well, I'll tell you one winner already, Bob Short. He's oh, got yeah. 35,000 people in the seats. So uh, kid probably paid back his bonus in one ball game. Yeah, how about that? All right, here's Merv Redman leading off. He bounced to third and laid down a sacrifice spot. 0 for 1. With Baltimore out in front, 3 nothing. 
Bean's pitch is a curve in there. Strike one called. Rutman batting 210. On deck is Bobby Gritch, and then the red hot Paul Blair after him. Curve low and away, one on one. Bean rubbed up the ball. Swings into the windup. Fast ball is high, two balls and a strike. Redmond, a right hand batter. Kirby hits the outside corner and it's two and two. Changeup hit off the end of the bat. Just foul. Just missed hitting the bag. A bean has such great motion. And throws every pitch the same way. And a fastball curve and that changeup. As these hitters are way off balance. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out, nobody on. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Fastball fouled upstairs and out of play. Tell you, Scooter, that straight change has really made uh, Fred Bean an excellent pitcher. They before could wait on the fastball or the curveball, but now he's added that straight change. And a lot of times he'll be behind and the hitter is looking for the fastball, and they'll get the straight change. It certainly has uh, made a big difference in his pitching this year. Again, the 2-2 pitch. Fastball bounced to third. Nettles one hand to Up, throw to first base, and they got him. That brings up Bobby Gritch, who fly to right and bounce to third. Gritch batting 241. First pitch to Gritch. Strike on the outside corner. That Gritch... Saw Bill White shave his mustache off, so he shaved his off. <laughs> Quite a few of them have had done it. A few on Oakland that have done it. The one strike pitch. High drive to deep center. Mercer goes back. He's got the room, though. On the warning track, makes the catch right in front of the 410 foot sign. Two out, and here he is, the hottest hitter in the American League right now, Paul Blair. He hit a long home run his first time up, and then doubled with two out in the third inning. He has driven in two of the three runs, and has scored a run. Curve is outside, ball one. He has changed, he said, his attitude. And he fouls that one back, and there's that pitch he used to bail out on, Bill. Yeah, he stayed in there. You know, uh, players now, they're, they're taking hair dryers with them. They're taking psychiatrists with them, psychologists <laughs> with them. This is a whole new ball game. <laughs> it certainly is. All right, it's one-on-one on, one on uh, Paul Blair. Look out, high and tight. And the crowd gets on Bean, and uh, I don't know whether Bean is trying to prove that the uh, hypnotist is right or wrong, but that was a little too close for comfort. Now I'm sure he's going to throw that curveball, and we'll see if uh, Blair hangs in there. Here's the windup. There's the curve, and it was low and outside. Three and one. He flinched just a little bit, Mr. Blair did on that one. But it was low and away. Two out, nobody on. The 3-1 pitch, and line but right at Nettles. Then he fires the helmet down. He's getting so many hits now, when they get him out, he gets mad, and you can't blame him. He hit a bullet to Nettles. Three up, three down, and at the end of five, Baltimore three, the Yankees nothing. Live modern this summer. 
Live cool this summer with Fetters, the room air conditioner of excellence. The linkage of two words, Fetters and Excellence, began more than 75 years ago. The company's founder established his business on the principle that if you build a product exceptionally well, your customers will be exceptionally loyal. When you buy a Fetters product, you know that it has been engineered with an extra measure of care, manufactured with an extra measure of concern, fabricated of materials that offer an extra assurance of dependability. Though the cost of living is going up, Fetters actually keeps the cost of room air conditioners down with its super saver and silver anniversary specials. There's a Fetters room air conditioner model available to meet your particular cooling requirements. See them, then live modern, live cool with Fetters at H.S. Braun Appliance in Albany, at the Carl Company in Schenectady, and at Ralph Feathers Furniture Appliance in Troy. Well, the first game of doubleheader, Detroit beat Milwaukee 6-3. to three. Coleman the winner, he's 11-7. Lindsay the loser in relief. May hit his 12th home run, catch his 10th. McAuliffe his 5th and the 8th with the bases loaded for the Tigers. Final once again, Detroit 6, Milwaukee 3, the first of two. They're going to play another one. Scooter? All right, Bill, the top of the order for the Yankees' clock is 2 for 2, and fouls the first pitch off strike one. Other scores in the National League, the Mets edge the Phillies 7-6. Mets all scored all their runs in the first inning in that ball game. They're playing two. San Francisco beat Atlanta 6-5. All right, the next pitch to clock. Is the strike on the outside corner. In the first of two, Chicago 6, Montreal 1. In the second ball game, it's 3-3. They're in the 13th inning. St. Louis 3, Pittsburgh 1 after 2. And that 3-3 uh, game, the uh, second game of Chicago, was suspended because of darkness. So they'll play it tomorrow. All right, meanwhile, McNally has thrown two uh, bad pitches, so the count is even at two and two. Nobody out, nobody on. The Yankees trailing three nothing in the top of the sixth. Dave rocks back. His pitch foul back to the screen. You're playing Chicago? No, I never, I've only been there once in my life. What a pretty ballpark. Good to hit got it. a lot of ivy around. Yeah, it's short. The wind blows out there. It's, uh... I mean, good background and everything? No, not no. center field. Again, the 2-2 pitch. A ground ball. Base hit. Clock is three for three. Son of a gun. He reached out for a pitch away from him and drilled it between first and second. Well, Horace got his hitting shoes on. Well, how'd you like hitting that, Bill? I like it because the wind blew out most of the time. And, uh, it was a short park. I think it's about 400 dead center... 368 in both uh, power alleys, and the ball uh, went well there. Uh -huh. Plus, Chicago had all right-handed pitchers. And no lights. No lights. You played all. You know, and the ball looks a lot slower in the daytime than it does at night. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, you don't have to worry about that. As long as people keep chewing gum, uh, he's not going <laughs> to put lights in there. Why? Right. Here's Roy White, who swings and fouls the first pitch off strike one. Roy sacrificed in the first inning and had an infield hit in the third. So Horace Clark now with three for three has 79 hits. McNally to the belt. Curve is low, one on one. On deck, Matty Alou. Morris Clark leading off first. McNally checks him. His pitch to Roy. Bounce to third base, and Robinson has to go to second one. Back to first. Safe at first base. What a play by Brooks Robinson. Had he not come up with that ball, it would have been a base hit. He went way to his left. Short hopped it and threw a strike to Bobby Gritch. So Brooks. Plains, he can still go get him, and he proved it there. They get the force play, but clock is out, and White is safe at first. Here's Matty Lou, struck out, fly to center. One man out. Matty batting 280. 
Fouls one back in the crowd down the right field line. Earl Williams gave it a short chase, but no chance. No. On deck, Bobby Mercer. Now, blowing out. Not quite as hot as it was earlier. Dave kicks. His pitch bunted down the third baseline. He'll never get him. They let it roll, and it's a bunt single. What a beautiful bunt by Matty Alou. I said if Brooks Robinson had not made that play, they would have had the bases loaded right now. Beautiful bunt single. And it brings up Bobby Mercer, who represents the potential tying run at the plate. One out. White at second. Alou at first. Bobby has bounced to second and was robbed of a base hit on a fine play by Bobby Gritch. Now, Bobby has an 11-game hitting streak going and is batting 287. On deck, Jim Ray Hart. Stretched by McNally. Runners lead at first and second. Pitch to Bobby. Big hit to right field. Here comes Roy White. Around third. Holy cow, how's it held him up? The throw came in at second base. White would have scored easily. Redman had no idea of throwing home. And now the bases are loaded with Mercer at first, Matty Alou at second, and Roy White at third. And the batter, Jim Ray Hart. So the Yankees are threatening, and that brings the Oriole bullpen in a hurry out there. They got two pitches loosening up. I see Grant Jackson out there in the left-hander scooter. The right-hander is probably Eddie Watt. All Uh, right. Bob Reynolds, number 34. Three runners lead away. The curve high and tight, ball one. You got those good peepers without glasses or the binoculars. I smell (laughs) left-handers. Wide, wide at third, Alou at second, that's Matty, and Mercer at first. Bobby is now hit in 12 consecutive ball games. Jim Ray Hart bounced to third, fly to left. McNally winds his pitch, swing and a miss at a sinker, 1-1. He had that ball in a good spot. If Jim Ray had hit that, might have been a double play. So the Yankees, I think, got a break there. It was down and away. With the wind blowing out, if Hart gets one up in the air, the Yankees could go out in front. McNally, kicks, pitch high and outside ball, 2-2-1. Two, two, Etcher Barron gives the sign. McNally ready. His pitch line drive right at Brooks Robinson. Throw it. He had a Lewis second, but didn't throw it. Hard hit a bullet right at Brooks Robinson. Brooks started for third, but White got back. Matty Alou was almost halfway down, and Brooks just couldn't get rid of the ball. And Matty slid back to second. Robinson never threw it. I want to tell you, Yankees have hit the ball hard this inning, but Robinson had come up with a fine play on Roy White to take a base hit away. And now this lineup by Jim Rayhart. Here's Greg Nettles. Line to second, hit to the box. Two out, and the base is loaded. First pitch to Greg. Foul off the umpire's chest protector. Strike one. Two out. Baltimore in front, three to nothing. Yankees have the bases loaded. Dave McNally trying to work his way out of this jam. Looks over at Roy White. Sidearm, almost a wild pitch as Etcher Barron had to go way out to his left to get it. One on one. McNally tried to come sidearm. Almost threw it away. Nettle steps out of the batter's box. Greg batting 247. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Curve hit high in the air. Didn't quite get a hold of it. Paul Blair is under it. Backing up and makes the catch. So McNally gets out of some jam. No runs. 
Three hits, no errors, and three men left. And in the middle of the sixth inning, it's Baltimore three, the Yankees nothing. All the power mowers on the market today start a job you have to finish. Except one, the new Boland's mulching mower. When it cuts your grass, it also cuts and recuts the clippings into a fine mulch that disappears down into your lawn, out of sight, so you have no clippings to rake up, no cumbersome grass bags to empty. The job is finished in one pass. The Boland's mulching mower is not only quicker, it's safer because there's no dangerous discharge chute. This also means you can trim close to lawn borders with both sides of the mower. So if you've been emptying grass bags or raking up unsightly clippings, try the new Boland's mulching mower, the one that does the whole job in one pass, in 22-inch push and self-propelled models, as well as an 18-inch trimmer. Manual or electric start, the Boland's mulching mowers. They'll keep you a good yard ahead. See them now. There are 21 Boland servicing dealers in the WQBK listening area. See the one near you. Distributed by ACA Outdoor Power Equipment, Incorporated. Well, the Yankees will be home Friday night against Gaylord Perry and the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland will also be there Saturday afternoon and a double letter on Sunday. Then the Boston Red Sox come in for a Monday night game, a Tuesday afternoon game, a double header on July 4th, that's Wednesday, and on the 5th of July, in a game originally scheduled to start at 6th, it's been moved up, and it will start at 2 p.m. So the Red Sox will be at the stadium at 2 o'clock on uh, Thursday, July 5th. Here's the scooter. All right, Bill. Tommy Davis bounced the second, singled on a 3 nothing pitch to drive in a run. And Beans pitched to Davis, a curve high, ball one. Tommy doing an excellent job as a designated hitter, batting 267. Another curve, swing and a miss this time. One and one. Davis has 26 runs batted in. On deck, Earl Williams. Curve and Tommy was going to butt. He had Nettles deep. He is an excellent butter. Big man, big and strong. Till he broke his ankle, he was the scourge of the National League. Swing and a miss at a curveball, it's two and two. He's not a fire he Nobody out, nobody on. Being into the windup. Curve, bounce to third. Nettles has it on two hops. Fires over to Felipe, and there's one out. So Freddie Bean has retired every man that he's faced in this game. Earl Williams. Earl Williams has fly to left and double to left, batting 222. Right-hand batter deep in the box. Fastball is high and outside. Ball one. Baltimore three. Yankees nothing. Bottom of the sixth. Felipe comes in now. Wants to have a little chat with uh, Freddie Bean. I don't know whether Nesta Shylock said something to uh, Felipe. He did. He wanted Felipe to go over and tell him not to do whatever he had been doing. Going to his forehead, huh? How about Gaylord? Curve, swing, and a miss, one and one. Can't believe that. One ball, one strike, one out. Low and outside, two and one. On deck is Don Baylor. Change up fouled in back of the plate. Had Williams out in front. Count is even at two and two. So Bean walks back on the grass. That time went to his mouth, and Charlock nodded his head, said that's okay. He's ready for the two-two pitch. 
curve in the dirt off Munson's arm, and it's a full count, three and two. Outfield deep on Earl Williams. The payoff pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Ready, Bean will throw that breaking stuff no matter what the count is. Two men are out. And the batter now, Don Baylor, who fly to center, receives an intentional walk. But with the bases loaded in the third and two out, Munson picked him off. Curve low, ball one. Each team with six base hits, but Baltimore bunched four of them in the third inning and a home run by Blair for the other one. Change up, and he lines it to Nettles at third. So Freddie Bean, we tied nine men in a row, ten actually with the pickoff. Nothing across, and at the end of six, it's Baltimore three and the Yankees nothing. Still no score on that Minnesota-Texas game that's probably waiting for the crowd to get in, Bill, you know? <laughs> they're not used to that many people. I'll bet that's what they're doing. At Cot against David Clyde. Kansas City at Oakland and Chicago at California later on. Cleveland at Boston postponed wet ground. Detroit beat Milwaukee in the first of two. 6-3, Coleman the winner, and Lindsay the loser. May got his 12th, Cash his 10th, McCullough his 5th with the bases loaded. Second game, it'll be Rodriguez against Primus. The Mets beat the Phillies 7-6. Stone the winner. Lurch the loser. Luzinski and Anderson home it. Second game, Phillies failed to score on the top of the first. It's Mike Wallace against Parker. Giants beat Atlanta 6-5. Bryant the winner. Devine the loser. Bryant now 12-5. Gar and Lum home it for Atlanta. Raid ahead two for the Giants. Cubs beat Montreal 6-1 in the first game. And second game suspended. The Darkness Cardinals leading the Pirates 3-1 at the end of two... And that's it. Right now, this is the New York Yankee Baseball Network, and we pause for station identification. Neville. And Candy Jones. Telling you that six nights a week, we'll be looking for you at midnight, right after the news. Third month is steps in for the Yankees as we go into the top of the seventh. Baltimore leading 3 0. Munson's been up twice. He's struck out. He's bounced out. First pitch is down low. It's a ball. And Phil Rizzuto in the background just said Minnesota did not score in the top of the first. <laughs> so David Clyde, young left hand, has gotten through the first inning. The 1 0 pitch to Munson. Cut on, chop foul outside of third. And it's 1 and 1. Frank Lester, I see uh, Mrs. Uh, Babe Ruth sitting down there. There was a ceremony here today, I think. Yes, uh, the Yankees had sort of a preview look at the Babe Ruth Shrine. Uh, those of the Yankee party who cared to attend, which is here in Baltimore, and Mrs. Ruth was uh, here for that. Of course, this is the birthplace of Babe Ruth. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Munson. Outside, ball two, it's two and one. Baltimore three, Yankees nothing. Top of the seventh. The Yankees had a chance to score a run last inning. They got three hits. And didn't score. McNally worked his way out of trouble. Got Jim Ray Hart on a liner to third. And got Nettles on a fly out. Two one pitch to Munson. Too high. Ball three. It's three and one. The Yankees have picked up six hits against McNally. Three of them by Horace Clark, the leadoff batter. An infield hit by White, a butt hit by Matty Alou. That's it. This was up in here to deep center. Paul Blair going back. Turns. He's under and he's got it. Munson flies to Blair in center for the first out here in the seventh. That'll bring in Felipe Alou, the first baseman. Right now, the Yankees, three games on top of Baltimore in the American League East. They play here again tomorrow night. Sam McDowell will be pitching for the Yankees. Jesse Jefferson for Baltimore. Here's a loop. Felipe takes a strike on the inside corner. He's been up twice, and he's bounced out twice to the shortstop of Langer.
Baltimore playing the loose straight away. The kick and the deal. Inside, one and one. Felipe, a right-handed hitter, is batting at 239. Now, Lou has three home runs. He's driven in 16 runs. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Felipe. Breaking balls outside, 2-1. and one. Baltimore picked up a run in the very first inning. Paul Blair hit his fourth home run with two out and nobody on. They added two more in the third. Two one pitch line right to the second baseman Chris. Two one handed for the second up. Two down. Here's Gene Michael, the switch hitting shortstop. So for two. He's fly to center and fly to left. Michael. Choked way up on the bat as McNally's ready. And the first pitch. How high and away it's a ball. Stick batting at 241. He has three home runs. He's driven in 30 runs. McNally working quickly. Michael chops this one foul off his foot. And it's one and one. Two outs, nobody on here in the seventh. Dave McNally has scattered six hits and given up no runs. Fritz Peters has started for the Yankees. And he's responsible for all three Oriole runs. He went two and two-thirds innings. Fred Bean came on in the third, and he's pitched excellent baseball. He's gotten everybody out. One-one pitch to Michael. Outside ball two. Two and one. Not only that, Bean picked Baylor off. Got pitch away from Munson. Munson picked Baylor off. Next pitch. Line to center field. Base hit in front of Paul Blair. Blair Waits gets it on the third hop, and he gets it back in the second. And Gene Michael has just picked up the Yankees' seventh end of the ball game against McNally. Michael's first, and the batter now is Horace Clark, who has a perfect night going. Clark has three of the Yankees' seven hits, all singles. Single to left center, single to left, and single to right. Clark now batting at 274. No home runs, 21 runs batted in. Here's the stretch now by McNally. And the pitch. Swung on, it deep to left field, but it's going to be foul back in the corner. Baylor all the way over in the corner, but he can't get to it. This is the ballpark uh, a couple of years ago that Clark hit two home runs. Right here in Baltimore, as I remember. I believe you're right, Bill. He hits well in this ballpark. The stretch by McNally, the 0 1 pitch, change up, fouled off. And the Hawks out front. I guess if a ball player uh, gets a few base hits in one ballpark, it becomes a psychological thing. He just knows he can hit there and he'll keep on getting them. And Hawks has had some good cuts tonight. Spade off for him, three for three. Here's the 0-2 pitch down to Clark. Change up, high and away, one and two. Baltimore leading 3-0 here in the seventh. Yankees have two outs and Michael at first. Earl Williams holding Michael there. Stick with a good lead. Now the set. And the 1-2 pitch to Clark. Swung on and foul off. Dave McNally with five wins and nine losses. Trying to pick up win number six against the Yankees. And his second over the Yankees this year. Throw the first, Michael back. Dick has a big lead there. Big gap for Clark over in right center field as Blair, the center field, he plays him a step or two toward left field. And Retman, the right fielder, plays him down the right field line. The 1-2 pitch, swung on, popped up, and foul territory on the first base side. First baseman Williams calls, he's under it, and he's got it for out number three. So Clark fouls out to Williams, and that's it for the Yankees. No runs, a hit, no errors, a man left on. We go into the bottom of the seventh, Baltimore three, Yankees nothing. Bob Grant wants you to call him. WMCA, Bob Grant on Dialogue Radio for whatever's on your mind. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Grant. Yes, ma'am. What do you think about Dr. Price? Ah. Uh, 
in relationship to everything else, although high, it's not out of line. Bob Grant is a reasonable man. Get off the phone. He groveled before them. Groveled, absolutely groveled before them. He kept saying, me a couple, me a couple. How many times does a person want to say he's sorry? It, uh, it, 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 it really uh, was, uh, was a disgraceful performance on his part because he's got it all backwards. Bob Grant, every weekday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., WMCA, New York. Well, I have just introduced Mrs. Claire Ruth, the widow of the babe, and uh, babe's sister, to the folks here in Baltimore. They're seated, as Bill White told you, in box seats down on the third base side enjoying tonight's ball game. Well, whether they're enjoying it or not, I don't know. Uh, the sister might be. I doubt that uh, Mrs. Claire Ruth is with the Yankees behind, Bill. All right, Frank. Here's Brooks Robinson for Baltimore. Bottom of the seven, Baltimore leading 3 nothing. Brooks has single left, and he's fly deep to left. A breaking ball is a call strike. Leonard High on the outside corner. Robinson not getting started with the bat yet. He's batting at 217. Another breaking ball. This one's outside. One and one. Brooks has four home runs. He's driven in 20 runs. Still has a great glove. Put a lot of leather on a baseball. One one pitch. Misses. Outside. Two and one. They play Robinson straight away. White gives him a lot on the left field line. Beans next pitch. Fastball foul straight back over our head. Two and two. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Baltimore three Yankees nothing. Baltimore batting. Fred Bean has yet to allow an Oriole on base. Two two pitch to Robinson. Fastball hit right off. Bean's glove. Clark has it at second. Throws the first. And Robinson's out. One away. The put out. One, four to three. Oh, is it back up the middle? Bean got his glove on it. Skipped past him. Clark picked it up and threw Robinson out. Here's Andy Etcheberry, the catcher. Etcheberry's playing his 16th game. He's only been up 31 times as seven hits, and he's 0 for 2 in this ball game. He's fly to center and fly to right. Batting at 226. And he's a right-handed batter. Bean's first pitch is fouled off. Now, June 16th was sort of a dark day in the life of Andy Etcheberry. He woke up that morning and found out he was still a Baltimore Oriole. He wanted so badly to be traded. He knew he wouldn't have that many opportunities to catch here behind Earl Williams. And uh, Elrod Hendricks, who hits left-handed, he really wanted to be traded. Here's the 0-1 pitch at your bear. Fastball on the inside corner, no balls and two strikes. Bean looking in for a sign from Munson. He's got it. Kicks and deals the 0-2 pitch. Fastball swung on a miss. Struck him out. Strikeout number two for Bean. And since he came into this ball game back in the third inning to relieve Fritz Peterson with the bases loaded and two down, and Thurm Munson picked off Don Baylor at first, Bean has retired 11 men in a row. And here's Mark Belanger, the shortstop. Takes a breaking ball and it's outside. No bell out there in the Yankee bullpen. The young right-hander, Dave Pagan, has begun to warm up, and Jim Turner is out there watching him warm up. Jim is usually in the dugout. Breaking ball on the outside corner. One and one. Two men out, nobody on. Baltimore leading 3 nothing. here in the bottom of the seventh. Beans next pitch to Belanger. Big curve ball is outside, ball two. Two and one. Belanger is single to center and scored. He's bounced back to the pitcher. So he's one for two. He's batting at 219. The next pitch. Curve on the outside corner. Strike two. Two and two. 
So Bean has thrown all curveballs to Belanger. Hasn't shown him anything straight yet. Now Mark backs out. He chokes up about six inches on a bat. Spray hitter. Just gets the bat on the ball. Curveballs fouled off. Nettles the third. Uh, Michael, the shortstop. Clark, the second baseman. And Philippe Bailou at first. White, Mercer, and Matty Lou in the outfield with Matty in shallow and right. Merv Bretman on deck for Baltimore here in the seventh. Bean on the back side of the mound gives that ball a little massage. Now he steps up on the rubber. And the 2-2 pitch to Belanger. Fast ball, chopped to short. Michael charges, takes that and solves it. Through. He was going to try to get the short hop. The ball kicked off, went off his glove and out in the short center. Oh, give Michael an error, and that's the first error of the ball game. He was caught in between hops on that one. One of those, you, you know, from up here, you can sort of see it coming. And it kicked right off the heel of his glove. And that will be an error on the first base runner against Fred Bean, although he did not earn his way on. Well, Belanger there down at first base, and here's Merv Rettman, the right fielder. He's bounced to third twice to sacrifice, so he's over two. Rettman batting at 208. Quick throw to first, Belanger's back. Baltimore leading 3 0. As Bean sets at the belt. And the pitch to Bretman is down low, a ball. Munch is still holding the ball there. <laughs> Freddie Bean threw a fastball that time right across the heart of the plate. As you said, Munson just held and held it, hoping Morgan Wick would change his mind. It's a ball. Two men out as Belanger leads from first. Bean checks it. And the pitch. Too high, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Upfield and infield straight away for Redman. He likes to hit the ball to the right side. Merv is not hitting as well he's hit as he has hit in the past. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Breaking ball in there's a call strike. Two and one. Bobby Gritch on deck. Bottom of the seventh. Yankees about hit Baltimore, but they haven't scored. Baltimore has touched the plate three times. Now the stretch by Bean. Quick throw the first. Belanger back. Paul Blair is fourth home run in the first with nobody on. And they picked up two more in the third. Here's a stretch by Bean and the pitch to Redman. Hit foul off the seats on the right side. It'll be two and two. Yankees had a big chance to get on the board in the sixth inning. Picked up three hits, but didn't score. Clark let off the inning by singly. White forced him at second on a great play by Brooks Robinson. Matty Lou got a bunch single. Mercer single to right, load the bases. Then Jim Ray Hart lined to third, and Nettle fly to center. 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball. Late foul into the seats on the left side this time. So Belanger getting his running in. He's round second. He'll go back to first. to the belt. And the pitch. Fastball hit in the air to right center. Mercer's after it. So Matty Lou. Bobby calls. He's under it. And he's got it for out number three. Silver ball to the seven. No run. No hits. One error. And one man left on base. After seven innings of play, the ball to leads the Yankees. Three nothing. For a while now, we at the Getty Oil Company have been selling premium gasoline for a few cents less per gallon than most other major premiums. So you get extra gas for your money. Now I'd like to tell you how much extra gas. If you drive around 12,000 miles a year and you fill up with Getty Premium, you'll get about 75 extra gallons. Now let me tell you how much 75 extra gallons is. It's enough gas to take you about 1,000 miles. It's more gas than the average driver uses in a month. If you weighed it, it would come out to about 500 pounds. 
If you had to buy it, it would cost you around $30. It's enough gas to fill up the average gas tank from empty to full four times. It's enough gas to fill up your lawnmower, your chainsaw, your motorcycle, and maybe even your son's motorbike for a year. More gas for your money. At Getty, we think that has to be the best mileage ingredient yet. Well, after tomorrow night's game, the Yankees will be flying back to New York. And uh, Friday night, they'll open a four-game series against the Cleveland Indians. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, a doubleheader Sunday. And then Monday, the Boston Red Sox come in for a night game Monday, Tuesday afternoon, doubleheader Wednesday afternoon, game Thursday, Bill. Here's White. Swings on a first pitch and chops it foul down the third base side. We're at the top of the eighth. For the Yankees, it'll be Roy White, Matty Lou, and Bobby Mercer. Roy has sacrificed, got an infield hit, and bounced into a force out. He's one for two. He's batting a 2.38. McNally's next pitch is a change up low and away, one and one. They play White straight away with Blair in shallow and center. McNally's 1 1 pitch. Too high. Ball two. It's 2 and 1. Brooks Robinson even with the bag at third. As the 2 1 pitch comes into White. Swung on and fouled off. That knocks Stone plate umpire. Hank Morgan Wick. His mask off. Got him dead center. It's 2 and 2. Those umpires to get their jaw broken that way. That's not an easy job, umpire. Here's the 2-2 two, two pitch to White. Breaking ball is too low. It's a full count. Roy White trying to get on base here in the eighth. Yankees are down 3 nothing. And the payoff pitch. Swung on line. Base hit left field in the hole. White will hold it first. As Baylor gets the ball back into the infield. And that'll bring in Matty Lou. Yankees trying to get going here in the eighth. That's hit number eight. Off Dave McNally. All singles. And there's action on the bullpen for Baltimore. Left-hander Grant Jackson gets up. Here's a stretch by McNally. The pitch to Matty. Swung on, chopped out in front of the plate. It's going to kick foul on the first base side. It's a strike. Matty's been up three times. He struck out, fly to center, and got a punt base hit. White back to first. One strike count on a loop. Now Brooks Robinson, the third baseman, moves in way on the grass. Williams holding White at first. The set and the pitch. Outside. One and one. Now Reynolds, the right-hander, gets up and starts losing for Baltimore. Along with Grant Jackson, the left-hander. Matty Lou batting a 283 with a home run 15 runs batted in. The set. And the 1-1 pitch. Swung on, top to first. Williams has it. Goes to second for one. Back to first. Double play. Two down. Earl Williams. Just turned to three. Six to three. Double play. I'll tell you something. He turned that play well, too, Bill. He showed some fancy footwork out there at first base. He fielded that ball, spun all the way around, got it to Belanger, then came back, and he wasn't on the bag. He got that throw, and he kicked his left foot down and got the outside corner of the bag at the same time. There was a lot of speed involved in that double play, and Williams, I thought, turned it over very well. Yes, he did, Frank, and here's Bobby Mercer, the center fielder. Mercer's bounced to uh, second. He got robbed by Gritch as he caught his little looper in right field. And Bobby's also a single to right, so he now has a 12-game hitting streak. And he takes high ball. Well, Jackson Reynolds still loosening up, but not as hard now. As McNally forced Matty Lou to bounce into a double play, and that took a lot of pressure off of him here in the eighth. 
Mercer cuts on the next one and fouls it back over our head. One and one. Baltimore has three runs on six hits in this ball game. The Yankees no runs on eight hits and have committed an error. Here's the one-one pitch to Mercer. Cut on, loop to left field. That's going to be in front of Baylor for a base hit. So Mercer going to the opposite field has single to left, and he's picked up his second base out of the ball game. And the Yankees' ninth, all singles. He's on at first with two down, and Jim Radar steps in. So we get word from Arlington, Texas, that Mike Adams of the Minnesota Twins has hit his first home run of the year. Came in the second inning with a man on off David Clyde. So Clyde got the side out without scoring in the first, but Mike Adams has homered for two runs for Minnesota in the second. Here's Hart. Takes high a ball for McNally. Hart's 0 for 3. He's bounced to third. Fly at the left and line to third. Now time's called. That's your bearing wants to talk to McNally. Little short conference out on the mound. McNally's throwing the ball well. He has excellent control. He hasn't walked anybody. Picked up a couple of strikeouts. And he sets the 1 0 pitch to Hart. Swung on top to third. A little short hopper knocked down by Brooks Robinson. Long throw to first, and they've got Hart there. Brooks fouled that ball, but it came down in front of him. Took his time, picked it up, and gunned it across to Earl of Williams Rod number three. For the Yankees in the eighth, no runs. They picked up two more hits, and they left the man on base. We go into the bottom of the eighth. Baltimore three, the Yankees nothing. Milwaukee 6-3 in their first game. Second game, uh, Milwaukee leads 1-0 at the end of one inning. And we told you Minnesota got a two-run homer from Mike Adams in the second off David Clyde down in Arlington to take a 2-0 lead in that ball game, and the Twins are still batting. And Cleveland at Boston postponed because of wet grounds. Right now, Bobby Grinch is set to lead off. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. All right, Franklin, Grinch is over 3 Bean's first pitch to breaking ball. It's in there, strike. Rich is fly deep to right. He's bounced to third, fly deep to center. So he's hit the ball hard. He's batting at 240. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Baltimore leading 3 0. And the hot hitting Paul Blair kneeling in the on deck circle. Breaking ball gets the outside corners. Paul strike two. Fred Bean has allowed only one runner, one base runner, in his four previous innings. He came on in the third. And that when Gene Michael bobbled Mark Belanger's bouncer. Fastball outside, it's one and two on Gritch. Bean looking in. Now kicks and deals a one-two pitch. Slider outside, two and two. Rich is a good ball player. Last year he played a hole just about every position except catch for Baltimore. He takes outside ball three. This year with the Baltimore club giving up four players for Earl Williams, 
including David Johnson. Critch has gotten a chance to play second base every day. And he can do it. Here's the payoff pitch to him. Curveball swung on and missed, struck him out. Strikeout number three for Brett Bean. One down here in the eighth, and here's Paul Blair. Lift that hand to Blair. Blair's driven in two of the three Baltimore runs. The first one with a solo home run in the uh, first inning, his fourth of the year. And he doubled in a run, the right center in the third. He's also lined to third, so he's at the ball hard. Swings on a change, he doesn't get it. Blair now batting at 323, and that's among the top ten in the American League. The 0-1 pitch, up and in, moves him back one and one. Before Blair started that little streak, he was down around 218. Went to see a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist told him to start having fun. And he is. Pitchers are paid. Fastball on the outside corner. One and two. So he goes in uh, the locker room before the ball game and just uh, loses himself. Stares at a spot. Comes out hit. Curveball. Caught him looking. Ball strike three. Strikeout number four for Bean. Two down now in the eighth. He was looking at the wrong spot then. Paul's a very conscientious uh, youngster. And he did. He has taken him a long time to overcome that uh, serious meaning he got at the hands of, I believe it was Ken Tatum on California. Here's Tommy Davis, the designated hitter. Davis has bounced a second. Drove in a run with a single. And he's bounced a third. Swings through a slider. One strike. Two outs, nobody on here in the bottom of the eighth. Baltimore leading 3 nothing. The Yankees will have the bottom part of their batting order up next inning. Outside, one and one. Here's the one one pitch to Davis. Breaking ball hit deep to left field. That ball is going, going, it is gone in the seat. Tommy Davis got a curveball and drove it in the corner. Into the seat for his third home, fourth home run of the year. Baltimore now leads 4 nothing, And this is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. Let's pause for station identification. Hi, this is Jack Hopke. There are sports in the afternoon at WQBK, FM, Rensselaer, even when there aren't Yankee games. Dave Smith is with me on my show at a quarter before each hour between 3 and 7. OTB results, stocks, and a lot of good music, too. So stop by the Jack Hopke Show 3 to 7. Earl Williams steps in. He takes down low ball. So Fred Bean finally touched up for a run here. The next pitch to Williams. A breaking ball. It's a strike. One and one. Carol Williams, or rather Tommy Davis, went up there uh, looking for that curveball that time, Bill, and Bean got it out over the plate for him. Change up outside. Two and one. Baltimore now leading uh, four nothing. They have seven hits. Two of those seven hits home runs. One by Blair, another by Davis. Blair's also a double, so is Earl Williams double. Williams takes outside, three and one. Earl has fly to left. He's doubled to left and he struck out. He's batting 222. Bean over the head. Kicks and deals a 3 1 pitch. Breaking ball, chop back past Bean. No, he one hands it. Throws the first, got him. That ball, Bean was off balance. When he finished with that breaking ball, he was over toward first base. The ball looked like it went by him, but he regained his position, went over bareheaded the ball, and then threw Williams out. Over ball in the eighth, one run on one hit. No errors, nobody left. We go into the top half of the ninth inning. Baltimore leading for nothing. Do you know what AFCO Financial Services is? Uh-uh. AFCO Financial Services is a place where you can borrow money, whatever reason you needed it. Right, okay, I got it. Here's what we'll do. I'll say something. If you can possibly relate it to AFCO Financial Services, you answer AFCO. Right, okay. Okay. Loans. AFCO. Vacation. AFCO. Bills. AFCO. Legs. <laughs> AFCO. AFCO. AFCO? 
That's right, actually, because uh, there's so many AFCO officers across the country that you can walk to most of them. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Jet airplane. AFCO. Why? I imagine you can walk to them. You can fly to them, right? Also, uh, you can go on vacation trips. Yeah, very cute. Okay. <laughs> Money. AFCO. Okay, then what we've established is that when you come in AFCO, you come in the money because if you deserve the credit at AFCO, you get it. Right. That's not your answer, is it? No, that's not my AFCO is my answer. <laughs> right, AFCO. Do I win? <laughs> Well, they've announced the paid attendance here tonight, uh, 21,822. They had about a 10,000 advance sale for this ball game, so a lot of folks came in off the streets. The weather cleared up to see the Yankees play the Orioles. Here's Nettle. Swings on the first pitch, tops out in front of the plate, picked up by Etchebear, and he'll tag Nettle. Nettle's never got away from the plate. One away. Good hustle by Andy Etcheber and the catcher. That ball could have kicked foul, but Etcheber hustled out and grabbed it before it got on the foul side of that first baseline, and Tag Nettle was at the plate. Here's Thurm Munson, the catcher. Munson has struck out, bounced out, and fly out. He's over three, batting at 294. Baltimore on top of the Yankees, 4 0 here in the top of the ninth. Munson taking a lot of time getting ready. McNally's first pitch is outside a ball. A two-run over by Mike Adams, all Minnesota got off the uh, youngster down in Arlington. It's 2 nothing at the end of one and a half. Outfield playing Munson straight away. The next pitch. Swung on, hit the third. Brooks drives and bobbles it. Comes up, though, throws the first. Got him. Two away. Brooks having a lot of trouble finding a handle on those balls at the third. But he has gotten everybody out. Only one uh, Roy White bouncer back in the third, and White was given a base hit on that one. He's dropped four, uh, four, yeah, four of them down at third base tonight. It's very unusual. But as you said, Bill, he's recovered in every case except the uh, one that was a base hit. Here's Felipe Alou. Alou chops one up the middle. Blanders after it. Can't get to it. Base hit center field. So, Felipe Alou has just picked up the Yankees' 10th hit. Oh, here's one of those games you can say Dave McNally has scattered so far 10 hits. And he's still got a shutout going. And, Frank, if uh, McNally follows through and pitches uh, a shutout here against the Yankees, as Dean Michael gets ready to step in, uh, he would have set a new Baltimore record with 27 shutouts career-wise. And he has done this one the hard way, if he doesn't. He's scattered ten hits, but they've all been singles. Here's the stick. He has one of the singles. He's one for three. Swings on a first pitch and fouls it back. So far, the Yankees have left eight men on base. The Orioles have turned over one double play. Well, the Yankees missed a big chance back in the sixth. They had the bases loaded with only one out and did not score. Here's the 0-1 pitch down to Michael. Down low, 1-1. One one. They also had a chance in the 8th. White let off by singling, but Matty Lou bounced into a double play, and Bobby Mercer then singled. And Jim Rayard bounced out. Now the stretch by McNally. The 1-1 one pitch to Michael. Outside, ball 2-2-1. Two, two and one. Philippe Palou at first base with two down here in the ninth. Baltimore leading 4-0. Baltimore's played errorless baseball. Here's a 2-1 pitch now to the stick. Swung on, chopped to short. Charged by Belanger. He short hops, goes to second. And they force a fleet failure there, 6-4, for the final out of the ball game. For the Yankees in the ninth, no runs on one hit, and they leave a base runner. Final score. Baltimore with Dave McNally pitching a 10-hit shutout. Baltimore 4 the New York Yankees and nothing. Frank Messer will be back with the wrap-up in just a moment. Live modern this summer. Live cool this summer with Fetters, the room air conditioner of excellence. The linkage of two words, Fetters and excellence, began more than 75 years ago. 
The company's founder established his business on the principle that if you build a product exceptionally well, your customers will be exceptionally loyal. When you buy a Fetters product, you know that it's been engineered with an extra measure of care, manufactured with an extra measure of concern, fabricated of materials that offer an extra assurance of dependability. Though the cost of living is going up, Fetters actually keeps the cost of room air conditioners down with its Super Saver and Silver Anniversary specials. There's a Fetters room air conditioner model available to meet your particular cooling requirements. See them, then live modern, live cool with Fetters. At Fernapco Furniture and Appliance in Albany, at Byright Appliances, Schenectady, and at Stylecraft Appliance in Albany. Boston Spa National Bank introduces its new free personal checking account service. Write as many checks as you want without a service charge by maintaining an average monthly balance of $400 or more. And if you prefer to maintain a lower monthly average balance, Boston Spa National's new personal checking account plan permits you to write as many checks as you want for a fixed monthly charge based on your average balance. No minimum balance required, no charge for deposits, no charge if you don't use your account. You get an initial supply of personalized checks free, a statement every month, and you can enjoy unlimited use of your account at no charge just by keeping an average balance of $400 or more. You may want to take advantage of Boston Spa National's bonus-free services, too, computerized automatic payment service, authorized for funds to be transferred automatically from your checking account to build your savings account or make your mortgage loan payments or car loan or any installment loan payment. Even your Christmas club payments can be automatic. Pick up a folder at your nearest office of Boston Spa National Bank for full details in Boston Spa and Burnt Hills, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. The Blair batted in two runs, and Tommy Davis, the other two for Baltimore. As Bill White told you, the Yankees' uh, closest opportunity was in the sixth. They had the bases loaded one out, but part line to Brooks Robinson and Nettles fly to center field. Tomorrow night, the uh, New York Yankees will go with Sam McDowell and the Orioles with Jesse Jefferson. We've never seen him. He is a right-hander. Bobby Mercer extended his hit streak through 12 straight games as he had two of the Yankees' 10 base hits. Once again, the final score was Baltimore 4 and New York nothing. And now this is Frank Messer speaking for Bill White and Phil Rizzuto, for our producer and statistician Bill Kane, and for our engineer Hal Brown, saying so long from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland.